Logan Schindelman was born June the 27th, 1986, and raised in Tumwater, Washington, by his maternal grandmother, Virginia Gibo. His father was a Saudi Arabian native who conceived Schindelman with his mother, Hannah, while visiting the Pacific Northwest on business. According to Virginia, Schiedemann's father left the United States before his birth, and the two never had a relationship. Logan and his older sister Chloe became legal dependents of their grandmother after Hannah decided to move to Seattle to attend art school. Logan attended Tumwater High School where he had been a star defensive back on the school's football team and a model student. Logan's mother, Hannah, lived nearby in Olympia throughout most of his life. As Logan became a teenager, his grandmother stated that he experienced an identity crisis due to being mixed race. Logan's mother was half white and half black, while his father was a Saudi native, and he had been raised by his white grandmother. After graduating high school in 2015, Logan enrolled at Washington State University, approximately 300 miles away in Pullman. He completed one year of his studies before deciding to return to Tumwater and drop out of college. After Logan left college, he moved in with his grandmother Virginia and half-sister Chloe. His grandmother stated she was aware he had been smoking marijuana at the time, which she worried was causing him to suffer from slight paranoia. He was kind of at a loss with what he was going to do with his life, she recalled. In Tumwater, Logan worked several odd jobs, which included at a laundering facility and labouring on his aunt's five-acre farm. On the morning of May the 19th, 2016, Schiedelman spoke with his grandmother. While the two prepared for their respective jobs, Gibo recalled of their conversation, he was just really nervous, which he isn't usually, kind of on a mission. She also stated he had claimed to have had an epiphany. Gibo told Schiedelman that they could continue their conversation later that evening, before departing for her job. After Schiedemann failed to arrive home, Gibo tracked his cell phone and saw it had pinged near Olympia. This led her to assume he was visiting his mother there. By the following day, May the 20th, Schiedemann failed to return home and Gibo attempted to report him missing, but found the Thurston County Police Department closed for the weekend. On Monday, May the 23rd, she filed a missing persons report. Upon doing so, she was notified that Schiedemann's car, a black 1996 Chrysler Sebring, had been impounded on May the 20th. The vehicle had been found parked at milepost 92, alongside southbound Interstate 5 between Tumwater and Maytown. His personal items, including his wallet, Several bags of food and cell phone were all found in his car, which had been directly turned over to Gibo from the impound lot. Inside, Schiedemann's wallet was his debit card, driver's license and $25 in cash. Shortly after Schiedemann's disappearance, several witnesses came forward to the Thurston County Police, stating they had witnessed Schiedemann's vehicle on Interstate 5 the morning of May the 20th. A woman driving on the interstate that morning reported seeing Logan with two Caucasian men standing at the back of his car, which was parked on the right shoulder of the interstate near Exit 95. She recalled seeing the car in the same location when returning home that evening, but this time with the hood lifted and no one visibly present. She described one of the men as being around six feet tall, with a thin build, blonde hair and wearing a tank top and jean shorts that were too small for him. The other man was described as having shoulder length blonde hair and wearing a flannel shirt with jeans. On June the 30th, 2017, law enforcement released a police sketch of the former man. 
Around 2 p.m. on May the 20th, three individuals called 911 to report a car matching Logan's drifting across the lanes of Interstate 5 between Tumwater and Maytown, near the milepost where Logan's car had been discovered. The witnesses reported that the car veered across three lanes towards the Centre de Varda, hitting the concrete barrier and stopping. No one appeared to be driving the car. A truck driver passing by reported seeing a Caucasian man with brown or red hair jumping out of the vehicle's passenger side and running into the woods on the side of the interstate. Later in the evening, on May the 20th, there was a potential sighting of a naked teenager in the area. Though the identity of the individual is unknown, Thurston County Detective Frank Frawley stated we thought that might have been Logan and so they did initiate a search using dogs. They didn't locate anything, could have been Logan, could have been anybody, the detective would say. The last clothing Sheedaman was known to be wearing included a black windbreaker, a white shirt, jeans and possibly a pair of Nike tennis shoes. Using cell phone records, law enforcement were able to track Logan's movements on the morning of May the 20th, which showed he had travelled towards Interstate 5 heading south. He then turned around and headed north before reversing directions again heading south on Interstate 5 and eventually stopping where his vehicle was recovered. Early in the investigation, law enforcement questioned the boyfriend of Sheedleman's half-sister who had recently moved into their household. Tension between Logan and her boyfriend prompted detectives to question him, though he was ruled out as having any involvement in Sheedleman's disappearance after passing a polygraph examination. Following Logan's disappearance, his family launched a large internet campaign asking the community for information in his disappearance. A Facebook page was established and local volunteers helped raise over $10,000 in reward funds by selling bracelets bearing his name at Tumwater High School. However, to this day, Logan still remains missing and his case unsolved.